Hello, Peter Four Seven Nine Zero Cyrus here, and welcome to my review of Fire Emblem Radiant Dawn. After doing a review of Fire Emblem Path of Radiance, I thought I should follow suit and do a review on the sequel, Fire Emblem Radiant Dawn. Though it did take quite a bit of time for me to actually uh, get a start on it. Now, when this game was announced for a North American release, I have to say I was pretty hyped since I was such a huge fan of Fire Emblem Path of Radiance. And I have to say that the game didn't disappoint me. Fire Emblem Radiant Dawn is probably my most played game that I have on Nintendo Wii. I probably played that game about 3 times, and this game is probably one of my favorite games on Nintendo Wii. But do I feel it's as good as Fire Emblem R Path of Radiance? Well, let's find out by reviewing the game. So without further ado, let's begin the review. Fire Emblem Radiant Dawn is an SRPG that was developed by Intelligent System and published by Nintendo. It's available on the Nintendo Wii. It's a direct sequel to Fire Emblem Path of Radiance, which is available on the GameCube. So expect a few spoilers from that game, which is to say Fire Emblem Path of Radiance. Visually, Fire Emblem Radiant Dawn looks a bit better than Path of Radiance, but still nothing noteworthy. But I have to say that I love the battle animations in Fire Emblem Radiant Dawn. They're much improved from Path of Radiance and looks great. They're just so glorious. From the pre-battle preparation animation that each character does, to the special skill animation, to even how each individual character dodges. Just the help with their unit dodging animation is using their shield in the game. The game's animation really put Radiant Dawn visuals above Path of Radiance. Seriously, I love the animations in this game. Well, maybe except for Aether, which strangely looks a bit meh in this game. But the other skill animation looks great. Environments also look pretty decent for the most part. The plot in Radiant Dawn is decent in my opinion. The game takes place about 3 years after the events that happens in Fire Emblem Path of Radiance, where Dan has lost the war to Crimea. But Crimea not having the resources to rule Dayan, they hand over control of the nation to the Benyon Empire. But that's not such a good thing as Benyon's rule over Dayan can be called oppressive. And as a response to Benyon's occupation, the Dawn Brigade was formed, which is a group that was created to help the people of Dayan. You play as Micaiah, who is a member of the Dawn Brigade, and then who strangely has the power to predict the future, which has been very beneficial to the Brigade. Overall, I have mixed feelings about the plot because there were some parts that I really liked, and some parts that I found boring. The narrative can be split into four parts. Part 1 is kind of typical stuff in RPGs where the Dawn Brigade is trying to win back their nation from the Empire. I love part 2, with Alinsa's situation of being able to adapt to being a proper ruler. Part 3 is a love and hate thing for me with the Lugu's War. Well, I just love how massive the conflict can be. But I've found that the reason for the Dawn Brigade joining the conflict to be a bit weak. Part 4 is a bit odd to me since it kinda drops the whole Lugu's War, but I did like it because it was just so epic. I mean the scale in Part 3 was big, but Part 4 just turns it even bigger. Especially the tower, I love going for the tower. The plot ranges from being meh to good to meh again, to good to the Kenji fluctuates when I was playing through the game, but if there was one thing I have to say that I love about the story, it's the epic scale. The plot is very grand and spans to all of Telius this time, instead of just Crimea vs Dane like in the last game, and I found it very entertaining because of that. And there are moments in the game that just defines epic. So in the end, the plot is entertaining, but there were a couple of stuff I didn't like about it. Character wise, I have mixed feelings about it. For one, every character that was in Fire Emblem Path of Radiance returns. You even get some new characters. Well, I guess not everyone because of Largo. And also note there's a library section where you can look up 
all the characters that was in Path of Radiance, which can be pretty useful if you're playing uh, this game without playing the prequel. So for fans of Path of Radiance, this is a major plus, as we get to play as our favorite characters once more, and we get bonuses for transferring a clear save data from a GQ memory card of Path of uh, Radiance. And a con is that support combo is kind of gimped in this game. What I mean by that is that you don't really get any backstory or character interaction when you do support combos. The characters instead just say generic one-liners. Why they did this? Explaining the gameplay portion in the review. But overall, the characters don't really get much development or interaction, except for the ones that get in the main spotlight, such as Makai, Alencia, etc. Most of the antagonists also suffers from this problem. Well, suffers from the that their motivations isn't really explained. Though there are a couple of them that get a decent backstory that explains their motivations, but most of them don't. The soundtrack in Radiant Dawn is fantastic. This has got to be my favorite soundtrack in the entire series. There's just so many tracks that I love from this game. Sorrowful Prince Peleus, The Battle of Pride, Wisdom of Ages, etc. These tracks are just so fantastic. Overall, Final Radiant Dawn got a good presentation for the animations being fantastic, all of the old characters from the first game returning, and some really epic moments in the story because of how grand in scale it is. But held back by a few stuff such as characters not getting backstory from support convoy anymore. Sora, always lost in your book. What have I said about watching your back? Fire Emblem Radiant Dawn plays out like most grid based SRPGs, where you control a certain amount of units and move them in a field which is grid based in order to achieve certain objectives in order to clear the map. Note that you can either use the Wii Remote or Nintendo GameCube controller to play the game as it really doesn't use any motion control in the game, which is a plus in my opinion, since motion control in a game like this would really seem gimmicky. The game uses a phase turn system which means you're able to move all units in your turn and enemies will be able to move all their units in their turn. Taking into account several factors such as movement range, what kind of weapons you're equipping, enemy skills, etc. will be key to beating the game. Like the previous Fire Emblem games, the unique death mechanic is still on here which means that if your unit health reaches zero, your unit is lost forever. Which means you have to be very careful in your unit placement, since careless actions can cost you a unit. The uniqueness in characters is also in Fire Emblem Radiant Dawn in terms of stats and growth rates. Each character classes are also very unique from each other. But the support combo is a bit iffy in this game, which kind of hurt the uniqueness of the character, but I'll get to that later. Fire Emblem Radiant Dawn also retains most of the mechanics that its predecessor has. It has the weapon triangle system, which works as a rock paper scissors system, it's pretty well balanced that it gives you advantage for utilizing the system, but the game isn't over reliant on it. The rescue mechanic is still in place, which means that a character with a higher con will be able to rescue a unit with a lower con and get them out of harm's way, with penalties to various stats. The linear nature of Fire Emblem is also in this game, which really adds to the game in my opinion since it gives you incentive for both short term strategies and utilizing each of the game mechanics to the fullest to progress through the game and clear the map, but also long term strategy with how you have to level up your characters efficiently since level grinding is impossible. Skills, bonus experience, forging, and the lose mechanic are also in here. Overall, most of the mechanics in Fire Emblem Path of Radiance is here in Radiant Dawn, but there are a few additions and a few adjustments to some of the mechanics. The first and foremost is the Magic Trinity system. There is the Anima School Magic Trinity system with Wind, Fire, and Lightning, but with, with the inclusion of Dark Magic in this game, there's also the traditional system of magic with dark being anima, anima being light, light being dark, which is a welcome addition. 
though the mechanic isn't really all that important into the fourth part of the game. Another is the skill system in Radiant Dawn. It's mostly the same as Path of Radiance, where every character got their own unique skills, which will affect them in battle, such as having the Paragon skill, will increase the amount of experience a person gets. Like in Path of Radiance, you get scrolls, which will obtain skills, and note your skill capacity since there is a limit to how many skills you can equip per unit. What's different in Radiant Dawn is that you're now able to remove a skill from a character, and you'll be able to reuse that skill now. Unlike in Path of Radiance, where you remove a skill, that skill disappears. I feel that this is an improvement since you're able to more freely experiment around skills now, and choose which character you feel would benefit the most from this particular skill. Another addition is the third class system. In previous games, once your unit reaches a certain level, you're able to change the class with promotion items, or in Path of Radiance case, get to level 21, which would raise their stats and reset the level to 1, which will allow you to get stronger since the level cap is 20. The third class function basically allows the unit to change their class once more and become even stronger, and they will be able to unit learn their mastery skills, such as the True Blade Learning Astra. I feel that this function really works well for a sequel, since it really makes you feel like the unit you got from the previous games are getting stronger in comparison to Path of Radiance. Unlike in other sequels where the returning characters get a nerf and only get as strong as they were in their previous game. The Lagoos mechanic is also a bit changed. The Lagoos, first and foremost, are unique units which are able to change to different kind of animals, which enable them to do deal a good amount of damage to other units, or give them uh, movement bonuses. Like in Path of Radiance, the Lagoos unit provide a good amount of strategy to the game as enemies, since each have a weakness you can exploit and strengths you have to be wary of. But as playable units, it's a bit improved in this game than the previous game because of one feature. You are now able to control the transformation. The fact that you can actually control it now is a huge plus for me. Also note that the Lugu's max level is raised from 20 to 40, and they're able to learn the mastery skill at level 30 using a Satori sign. The next thing I'll talk about is the support conversation system. Unlike from previous Fire Emblem games, you're now able to create support combos with anyone. But because of it, there's no longer really any character interaction in the support combo, and it's replaced by one-liners basically. I say I'm not really a fan of the change since characters kinda lose their uniqueness. Now for the one mechanic I wish didn't stay, Boil Rhythm. Biorhythm is based on mechanic determines if your characters get um, bonuses to their stats or get penalties to their stats depending on where their biorhythm is. If their biorhythm is in the green, they get stats. If it's just in the middle, around the middle, they do, uh, it's neutral so you don't get any stats up. Though if it's in the red, you get penalties to your stats. What's worse in this game's biorhythm mechanic than in Path of Radiance that it affects more stats. So, yeah, I really don't like that. And battle rhythm isn't really something you can control. So, yeah, I really hate battle rhythm. The other mechanics, such as bonus experience, forging, remains mostly the same. Map design wise, I say I really like it for the most part, especially during a couple parts of the game where the scope of the map is massive, and the game pits you against like 50 enemies at once. There are also a couple of stages which I thought it was just pure awesomeness. Such as the chapter before the ending of part 1, or at the final area at the third stage. There are maps that I totally love, but I do get a bit annoyed with how the game splits your party occasionally. And I'm also not that big of a fan of Dawn Brigade missions. And that's got to do with some of the characters. The characters themselves aren't bad. I mean, Edward can turn out to be a great true blade, if you work on him, but you really need to baby him in order to become useful. Difficulty wise, I'd probably put Fire Emblem Rain Dawn on the hard side of the difficulty scale, though I don't think it's too hard for newcomers to uh, go play on the easy difficulty of this game, though I probably think that Fire Emblem Path of Radiance, Blazing Sword, or even Sacred Stone is a better starting place for the series. Lengthwise, it took me about 45 hours to complete the game, 
But there is replay value in doing a second playthrough of the game, since you get extra cutscenes. Well that and you get one more feature, but I won't say what it is since it involves the game's story. You also have the ability to battle save in the game, which can be pretty useful. Overall, Fire Emblem got great gameplay with a few stuff annoying me, such as how the game kinda splits up your party at times when you're playing through the game. Overall, I think Fire Emblem Rain Dawn is a great game, though there is a good amount of flaws to it. But even with the flaws, I have to say that I love the game. I just love how big the game can get in terms of both the overall story and gameplay. I love how the overall stories have a conflict that revolves all of Tellius, and how in part 4, the overall scope of the story gets even bigger. I love the third class change system as it really feels like the character in Path of Radiance is getting stronger in Radiant Dawn. Overall, I just love how massive Fire Emblem Radiant Dawn can get. The glorious animation of the game also really gives Radiant Dawn a faster flow than Path of Radiance. There are glaring flaws to it such as the support combo getting gimped in terms of character development, and I do find it annoying how the game splits up your party. And also, Radiant Dawn is a game which you need to play have played the previous game to enjoy fully. You can play the game without playing the prequel, but it won't really give you as much as impact as compared to someone who has played the prequel. But overall, I say this game was a blast for me to play through. Now is it as good as Path of Radiance? No, not really in my honest opinion, but it's still a great game. I personally give Fire Emblem Radiant Dawn an 8 out of 10. A great SRPG, but there is a good amount of flaws to it.